October 3rd, 2021, one of the most enthralling bank races in recent memory is taking place. Cyclocross world champion Mathieu van der Poel is up against European champion Sonny Colbrelli and a young Florian van Meers fighting for victory a few hours north in a field in Gieten. Noel van Meers watches how his son goes so close to an iconic victory. It's a sign of quite the season to come. Welcome to Waterloo. The World Cup is back in its brand new form. 16 rounds from here to Hogeheide. We've had the warm-ups, kicked off serious business in Gieten last week, but now we really get going. Canada's Magny Rochette gets the inaugural hole shot of the World Cup this year. However, 50 minutes later the Canadian is nowhere to be seen anymore as the battle comes down to Jumbo Visma's Mariana Voss and Balwaza Trek's world champion Lucinda Brandt. Into the final straight and Voss wins. Not much later it's time for the men to open up and as they do, so do the heavens. Gunten Herbans is the first victim but the worst is for Thibaut Nice who crashes and breaks his collarbone early in the season. Ailey Isabeet lays down a frightening gauntlet to take the win. A week later, it's the dress rehearsal. Three months until this very circuit hosts the World Championships. Welcome to Centennial Park in Fayetteville. How is the course? Absolutely soaked. Lucinda Brandt plows through the mud as the fastest, whilst an incredible last gasp comeback nets Clara Honsinger a second ever home World Cup podium. In an even wetter men's race, Gunther Hermans delivers his best ever performance. For the first time, Hermans wins a World Cup, seeding a first win for his Dormans team too. Days later, a third round of our American week takes place in Iowa. Voss and Betzema lead the charge, but behind there's a new kid on the block. Blanca Katavash's strong road form carries over for a career first World Cup podium, becoming the first Hungarian ever to achieve this feat. Isabit meanwhile makes it two from three in the men's race as he holds off an impressive Lars van der Haar. In the coming weeks the season gathers up speed. In the USA the inaugural USCX series is completed and despite both winning five of the eight rounds, Magali Rochette and Vincent Bastans finish second and third respectively in their categories. Consistency is key as Caroline Mani and Kerry Werner become the first champions of the USA. The Coupe de France and the British National Trophy Series reach their midway points too, both with four rounds already done. In France, Amandine Fouquenet and Joshua Dubois take command. However, most eyes fall on 18-year-old French super talent Lynne Burquier, who at barely 18 wins the second round of the competition. In the UK, Amira Mella is the big winner, Back at the very top though, in the Super Prestige and the World Cup, Betsma and Isabit take the spoils in Ruddervoorde, whilst Betsma and Aerts are the winners in Zonhoven, before we reach Overijs and the Koppenberg on the next weekend. On the men's side, Isabit does a double. On the women's side, however... After a weekend of incredible foreign breakthroughs, the next one would be a weekend off for Hansinger as the European Championships take place on the Vanberg in the north of the Netherlands. Blanca Vash meanwhile moves up to the elite category for the very first time, making her debut 
at the fight for the elite European title. Over in the States, Curtis White and Ruby West clean up the Northampton International, whilst down in Spain, riders who missed out on Euro selection battle in Lodio and in Caranta. In the meantime, back in Drenthe, Over two days on the Van Berg, we welcomed six races and six brand new European champions. Aaron Dox of Belgium and Britain's Zoe Backstedt became the junior champions. Ryan Kamp managed to outmaneuver a strong Belgian team to claim the under-23 title, while Shirin van Anrooy held off Puk Pietersen for the women's equivalent. In the absence of Marianne Vos, Lucinda Brandt obliterated the women's field to add a European title to her World Championship bands. Blanca Vash officially moved up to the elites for this race and duly delivered with a debut silver medal, Yara Castellain being ecstatic with third. But the real hero was saved for the very last. Shaking off all the Belgians, lastly Quinten Hermans, Lars van der Haar became European champion for the second time in his career. After first achieving this feat, in 2015. This remarkable triumph was his first victory since the 2019 Nacht van Woerden, and it wouldn't stop here for the Jack Russell. After a midweek tussle in Neil saw Isabit and Brandt take victory, Anna Cade announced her return from a broken collarbone with an emphatic victory in Leuven, whilst Felipe Ort became the first Spaniard to podium ever in Belgium. The real highlight of the weekend though was once again Lars van der Haar. He was dreaming of a World Cup victory, something he hadn't tasted since January 2017. And boy did he deliver, smashing Ailey Isabit out of his wheel on the final lap to show off his brand new European Champions jersey in brilliant style. His fellow European champion Lucinda Brandt would win the women's race, but Peterson again relegated to a second place. Around us the season picks up with crosses throughout Europe and the US. Amandine Fouquenet achieves a Coupe de France double in Bagnol de Lorne, sharing her spoils with the Swiss Timo Roeg and the French Joshua Dubois. Eric Brunner and Caroline Mani romp to doubles at the Really Rad Festival, whilst the super prestige Max Plus is taken home by Lucinda Brandt and Edie Isabit. The day after, Isabit wins again in the World Cup in Coxade. Anna-Marie Worst claims a well-earned victory alongside him. The fourth round of the National Trophy Series is in Sunderland and the victories go to Rory Maguire and Amira Mella. But the big simmering question everybody is left with is when do the big dogs return? Mariana Vos announces she'll be back for Val d'Isol, Blanca Vache in Namur, Pete Cochran van Aert in Boom, and world champion Mathieu van der Poel announces his return in Rukven. But before all of that lot, we get one other one who returns back to the top level of racing. Magali Rochette is a woman of many failures, but she's equally a woman of getting back up every single time. If she were to get knocked down 10 times, she'd stand up 11. Canada's finest crosser, the Pan American champion, made her way back into European competition after the Canadian nationals got cancelled. Rochette would come to Europe aiming for one thing, realising the potential that she knew she has. The talent is there, she knows it, but the execution never quite seemed to work. There was always something off when racing far from home, but this year she was determined to get it right. In Kortrijk she rides to a solid 8th place, Lucinda Brandt and Tona to the victors in the x Trophy second round. The next day, World Cup round number 8 is on the menu. Besançon in France. As Lucinda Brandt takes off on her own, amongst the orange warfare just behind, one solitary Canadian flag is flown. Rochette pushes past her rivals one by one to deliver a second place finish. The first time Rochette podiums a World Cup on this side of the pond, it is a stress releasing performance. All that frustration from all them years where it didn't quite work are finally released as Rochette shows the world what she's capable of. And today I finally proved myself that I could do it, so I'm very, very happy. In Besançon, we also had someone else show their capabilities. 20-year-old Pim Ronhaar delivered a first World Cup podium. 
being amongst the youngest riders ever to achieve this feat as he finished third behind winner Eli Isabit. The following week sees only one major race as the World Cup Antwerpen falls through due to Covid-19 regulations. The super prestige of Boehm however survives it and with it Wout van Aert and Tom Pidcock re-enter the battlefield. Before we get to that however, the Pan American Champions took place as well, with Eric Brunner and Raylan Nuss claiming the title for the first time in both of their careers. Now then, back to Boehm. As Lucinda Brandt claims yet another win, this time dispatching Inge van der Heide, the men's race is where the attention really lies this weekend. Before the race began, Wout van Aert stated a target of a top 5 finish in Boehm, saying he expected to be around that level. Tom Pidcock aimed similarly, and whilst Pidcock's prediction was pretty much on target he'd finish 7th, it took merely one lap for people to realise quite how good Wout van Aert is. Wout effortlessly sheds his rivals early on the second lap, only Donat even laying a finger on him. Van Aert would dominate, finishing with 1 minute 40 as an advantage over everybody else. Playtime was over, the King of Belgium is back. Over the next 7 days Cameron Mason and Josie Nelson take victory in Clanfield and the Coupe de France comes to a close. Loris Rouillet and Joshua Dubot take a win each as Dubot claims the men's title in Troy. On the women's side, Lynn Burquet continues her amazing season by winning the double, but she's missed out on some earlier rounds in the competition and therefore the overall is out of her reach and falls into the lap of Amandine Fouquenet. Meanwhile, the Etias Cross continues in Essen. In the men's race, Wout van Aert makes mincemeat of secondary competition, beating Thijs Aerts and Pim Ronhaar, whilst Zoe Bakstedt claims a shock breakthrough victory the 17 year old becomes the youngest rider ever to win an elite cross on Belgian soil, beating Laura Verdontrot and Anna Kay on the day. The day after it's another World Cup and this time it's from the frozen palace of Val d'Isor. For the first time in years we get a proper snow cross from the Italian alpine village of Val d'Isor home to many a mountain bike world cup. Mariana Vos makes her return to cross in Italy, but she does so with a few mistakes. A small fall and chain trouble put the seven time world champion far from the front of the race. In the ice and snow, everybody seems to be making a mistake though, except for one young woman who seems totally unfazed. Under 23 world champion Fem van Empel floats over the snow like it's the smoothest paved road in the world, until she starts to run out of steam towards the end of the final laps, where suddenly Marina Voss has appeared, dashing past an impressive Rochette into second. Suddenly, Voss is breathing down the neck of her young compatriot. And now she's almost there. She glides away and powers away over the bridge. And Mariana Voss squeezes on, oh, Voss squeezes on the inside. What an incredible finish here in Val de Sole. The youngster wins her first World Cup. Then Van Empel wins in Val de Sole. Van Empel wins, and so for only the second time ever, a teenager wins a World Cup round. Only Mariana Voss had ever managed to achieve it. Voss would take second on the day, Magali Rochette making it two podiums from two World Cups in third. In the men's race, Tom Pidcock takes the first podium of the season. Michael Van Turenhout performs well too, but once again, there is no stopping Wout van Aert, who dominates affairs. Over the next week, the fifth national trophy round takes place in Gravesend. Cameron Mason and Millie Cousins prove that the youth is coming up by taking the wins there. Meanwhile, in DuPage County in the USA, the American Cyclocross Championships are held. Eric Brunner adds a US title to his Pan Am title, whilst in the women's race, Clara Honsinger proves she is so much better than the opposition by putting three minutes into her nearest competitor, as she defends her title as America's best female crosser. 
The following week, Hansinger leads a massive American contingent back into World Cup racing with a double header at the Panflat Rückfen and the very much mountainous Citadel of Namur. The big news this weekend would be the people who would not be here. Wout van Aert was not going to race this weekend, taking a mini break in preparation of the guest periode, whilst Mathieu van der Poel would have had his return in Rukven before racing in the Moor too, but a knee injury picked up in training kept him out of these races. Tom Pidcock took full advantage, outjumping Adi Isabit to claim a very first World Cup win, becoming the first British man to achieve a World Cup victory, joining women Nicky Bramier and Evie Richards as the British World Cup winners. Richards and Bramier both achieved this feat in Namur, the course up next where Pidcock's aim would be to take a second World Cup win and go solo as Britain's most successful ever crosser. However, it was not to be, Pidcock coming a cropper on the infamous off camber section, having to give the win to Michael von Thurenhout, who in his own right claimed arguably the biggest win of his career. The women's racing meanwhile saw a pattern emerge. Voss and Brandt came head to head again in Rukven, and once again it was the seven time world champion who got the better of Lucinda Brandt, Voss winning a third World Cup of the season. In a Vossless Namur, Brandt ran rampant, putting Betzema and Peterson behind her to claim another win and extend her commanding lead in the World Cup. Now, Namur is not just a brilliant racetrack, but it's also a signal, a signal that the guest periode is underway, and despite Dichem falling through, we are still treated to seven races in 14 days, the first of which is at Dendermonde on Boxing Day, where it returned. After injury pushed his return back, Mocho van der Poel started a cross for the first time this season, and he did so with flying colours, smashing into a titanic battle with Wout van Aert and Doan Aert. The three fought out an awesome race, with van der Poel settling for second, having to let van Aert run off with the win in Den de Monde once again. With the women, the opposite occurred. Brandt flew off at the start, leaving Clara Honsinger to do a heroic final lap to come within five seconds of the world champion. The very next day Brandt would win again, this time dispatching Fem van Empel in a final sprint at Zolder. The big news however was that of Mathieu van der Poel. He was back and so were the problems to his back. Van Aert shot off at the start and Mathieu tried everything to follow, however things weren't quite right and the flying Dutchman started to slide backwards, eventually leaving the race at the end of the fifth lap, leaving huge question marks over his season. Van Aert won, but the real question was how is Mathieu? It quickly became apparent that he'd be out until Herentals, or at least that's what his team communicated. In the build up to that race where we'd once again yet to see him, we had the Arsene Cross, which went roughly as expected, and so did Baal, or at least it did if you look at the results sheets. The race itself had its moments, you could say. Tom Pidcock narrowly missed out on victory, he'd need Van Aert to have slightly bigger issues than what he faced in Baal. Luckily for Tom, less than 24 hours later, that's exactly what happened. Van Aert ran into issues on lap 1 of the World Cup in Hulst, and so Pidcock pranced off into the distance to take his second ever World Cup win. Buck Peterson meanwhile picked up a third second place of the season, as another brave attack of hers was undone by Lucinda Brandt. We then saw Gullerum, where Shirin van Anrooy takes her very first big, big win. Zoe Backstedt finishes an incredible second, and Magali Rochette encourages underage drinking on the greatest podium photo you'll ever see. In the men's Pidcock romps to victory, but behind some youngster called Joran Wiesere comes from the background to beat his teammate Quinten Hermans to second. An off day for Hermans? Or is this Wiesere kid actually quite good? Then finally came Herentals, but with it came no Van der Poel. In fact, what came with it was no more Van der Poel at all. The back issue isn't going away, Alpers and Fenix encouraged total rest, and so that's what would be done. Van der Poel would not race the Worlds, or anything else for that matter, his season was done. 
Some four hours and two Herentals races later, Wout van Aert also announced he would not be racing the world in Fayetteville, to the dismay of many. However, this decision would also light a fire under the season's end, as everybody suddenly was handed the chance of a lifetime to win the Rainbow Bands. But before we battled for a world title, there were a handful of national titles still to win. With the Rainbow Bands up in the air, now was the time to impress. As the Americans left for home to prepare for their home world championships, it was time for the European National Championships weekend. Some riders dominated, Vass and Van Aert winning almost with their eyes shut. Some won in close battles. Arguably the biggest shocks came in France, where 18-year-old Lynne Burquet crowned herself the elite national champion at the Livain course that will host the World Championships in some four years time. No less than two hours later, Joshua Dubot became the third member of his family to become elite French cyclocross champion, pulling off a shock win in his own right to deny Clément Venturini the title. We then reached the 16th of January and the penultimate round of the World Cup in the French Flamanville. The National Trophy Series also finishes in Broughton Hall. Newly crowned British champion Thomas Mean wins there, alongside Anna Kay. Neither rider wins the overall, however, as Corin Carrick Anderson and Amira Meller achieve that feat. Back in France, Eli Isabit puts on a great ride to show everyone he's the boss in the World Cup, but the real thrill comes from the youngsters in the women's race. The lead up to the World Championships truly begins now, with Hammer and Hoge Heide forming the final week before the World Championships take place. In Hammer, Lucinda Brandt and Lauren Zweig strike gold as their rivals falter ever so slightly. The following day in Hoge Heide, however, all is different. For the women, Mariana Voss takes to the start line once more, and she takes to the finish line too. A stunning attack, blowing everybody out of her wheel. Brandt finishes in second, guaranteeing the World Cup for her, and with Bug Peterson claiming another podium, her under-23 World Cup win is safe too. Throughout the race, we also saw Blanca Vash and Silvia Persico showing rising form, and on the men's side, it almost goes bad too. Lars van der Haar makes a small mistake and ends up taking out the whole Belgian contingent. Fortunately, nobody is hurt. Arts and Van Turenhout get away with their own little incidents too. Nerves are building in the men's peloton. The one rider leaving Hoge Heide with cause for concern in the end though, would possibly be Tom Pidcock. After the Van der Haar crash, Pidcock is gifted some 40 seconds, and you'd think he'd ride that home, but eventually he's nonetheless beaten by both Isabit and Van der Haar. A worrying sign. Will he have it in seven days time? A better question is, would he even make it? Because no less than a day after Hoge Heide, Riders are getting tested before boarding their planes to the USA, and the first victim to COVID falls. Quinton Hermans cannot travel to the course where he was victorious earlier in the year, a devastating blow to a rider who could have gone far there. Belgian junior Zadie von Sinai swiftly follows, then the Italians are dealt a crippling blow as half their squad falls through too. We also learn Anna Kay's tears were prompted by a concussion she suffered in Hoge Heide, her dreams going up in smoke as well. 
The drama doesn't even stop there. Days later, Anna Marie was tested positive, the Dutch podium contender having her dreams shattered. Shortly after that, Denise Betsema forfeits too, citing an unknown illness, not COVID related. Nonetheless, the whole cyclocross world that is negative for the COVID-19 virus slowly filters towards Fayetteville, and on Friday, we're treated to the opening event, the inaugural Mixed Relay. Despite being the favourites and taking an early lead, the Belgians seem to falter as Italy get the better of the USA to become the inaugural Mixed Relay champions. Unfortunately, it's merely a test event and the Italians do not take home any official jerseys. Official jerseys are handed out the next day though. And so, with six world titles handed out, the season slowly bows out. By next week in Lille, the focus has shifted to the road. Voss, Pidcock, Kastelein, Pietersen, Van Empel all end their seasons. In a soaked through Croata course, Lucinda Brandt and Tone Arts achieve a double for the Bolwaza Trek team. The big news in Lille though happens off the bike. Rumours have sprouted up in the week before that Patrick Lefebvre owner of road cycling super team Quickstep Alpha Vinyl is entering a partnership with Jan Dormont of Dormont Cyclocross, a potentially huge development for the sport, leaving Intermarché, the current Dormont's partner, in search of new riders. As confident as Jan Dormont may be that his plan will go through, there is a shark circling beneath his feet. Hans van Kasteren is the agent who owns the contracts of Dormont's riders Hermans, van Kessel, Wieseuren and Verstringen. He secretly negotiates a deal behind the back of Dormont for the four riders to join Alpes in Phoenix. The news hits like a bomb. Dormont and Lefebvre are furious. This development leaves them with the partnership potentially hanging in the balance as now both they and Intermarché are left in a mad scramble for only a handful of riders. And this means there is a real mad dash to shore up contracts for the next year. Don van der Bos announces a move to Alpecin, whilst Lauren Zweig is left as potentially the most interesting free element on the market. With all this going on, we head into the final rounds of the season, the finale of the Super Prestige in Gavre and the final X2O trophy in Brussel.
in Havre, a cross classic, Lucinda Brandt is once more comfortably on top, showing off her new European stripes with an almost effortless victory to wrap up the overall of the Super Prestige as well. Anna Marie Wurst and Denise Betsema complete the podium both on the day and in the overall. Eli Isabit comes into Havre with an almost unassailable lead over Tone Arts. The leaders of the Super Prestige battle each other for second on the day though, as Lars van der Haar is too strong for both of them. The Jack Russell leaping into a cross classic victory, winning a Super Prestige race for the first time in his career. The X2O Trophée comes to an end a day later, signalling the end of the season. In Brussels, Tone Arts and Lucinda Brandt are effectively guaranteed the overall victories, despite both struggling a little bit on the final race in Brussels. Denise Betsema pulls one last rabbit from a hat as she wins the final race of the season, staking her claim as second in the Trophée overall. Paul Souser double up on the final day too, as Michael van Turenhout becomes the last rider to raise his hands aloft for this season, winning a trophée cross for the first time in his career. And with that final van Turenhout victory, we bow out another amazing season of cross. With over 100 races and plentiful winners across the globe, it's been a season of highs and lows for so many different people. But altogether, it has been utterly unforgettable. I do wonder what next season has in store for us.